Alrighty, hello everyone. Hope you are enjoying this first day of RPGs. We love three, presented by the RPG Valkyries. My name is Vonnie Bon. I'm going to be your host for this next run of Fantasy Star 2 by Lisa Rocks. So uh, we are just about ready to go. And uh, if that is the case, Lisa, if you are good, I will hand it on over to you and you may begin when ready. Uh, are you ready for some Sega 1989 action? And um, so basically what's going to happen um, pretty much in the beginning of the run, I'm going to stay quiet because I have a hard time counting in my head and talking at the same time. Who think? Um, and Starbird will be on commentary. So um, thank you for coming by. So I'll start in. Uh... She'll start soon. <laughs> trademarked, by the way. So, what she's going to do right off the bat is um, she's going to um, name our hero ABWX, or some combination of those letters, and this is will come in very... Um, this is kind of important as far as the run's concerned because you know, we're, we're going to break the game, and in order to do that, we need to access um, data within the game's memory. So, uh, whenever you're ready, Lisa... Before you do that, speaking of naming characters, we do have a bid war. We have a bid war here to name both Amy and Rudo. Uh, when is the cutoff for those? Aren't there? Is it right now? I think they cut it off at the beginning. Okay, then if they cut it off at the beginning, would you like those names? Um, not yet. Okay, you just let me know. Okay, I'll let you know. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so let's. Whenever you are ready, Lisa. Deep breaths. We got this. All right. So, as, as we all know, this is Fantasy Star 2, and the, the game takes place in the distant future of the year 1989. Oh, wait, that's when the game was released. <laughs> so, basically, there's a lot of lore that goes on, but we're, we're doing speed runs, so no one really cares about this. She's going to be mashing through things. Um, the first part of this is basically the make or break of it. After this, um, the PS... It's basically PS2 at this point, which is not PlayStation 2. It's basically Power Stroll 2, which means there's going to be a lot of walking. Um, so, the first thing... The first step to in, um, getting this glitch is uh, basically getting our hero naked. And by doing that, we toss his knife, his carbon shoe, excuse me, his carbon suit and his shoes. He needs to have an, an empty inventory in order for us to activate the inventory glitch. Um, in order to do that, what we do is we go into the storage room and the central tower. We um, look at May's inventory, we cancel out, and then we go into an empty inventory, which is our hero in this case. And um, she's going to store a, an item there, which we're gonna pick up later, but now everything's broken. So you can see, at this point, she is counting, and I'm going to try and be as quiet as I can because uh, this is quite tricky. She's going to count a certain number, and she's going to pull items out of um, RAM values. So there's the moon do right there, which is assigned at a certain number. And in doing so, it's pulling out, um, I believe, out of her defense stat at this point. And because it's out of the defense stat, Nay's going to be basically extremely tanky at this point. And but there's a lot more to it. We're actually going to be pulling out a bunch of items. So there she has team, which is a key item. Now she's going to um, duplicate team, and she's going to have two of them. And this is going to allow us to do another glitch that's going to um, make the run a little bit safer. Um, basically, at this point, she is um, equipping Nay with certain items and uh, removing items. And then she's going back to that defense slot, and she's pulling out whatever's in there. And the next item is going to be the Nay shot. Um, so there's one of the eight nay items you need in order to beat the game. And so, basically, and if you, if we actually played with Rudo, it would be one thing. So, but we got more items to get. We actually need the eight nay, nay items, which every one of them can be get, er, obtained through this glitch. And you also need the four key cards of the colors, because you got to go through the dams in order to um, get the spaceship in order to advance in the story and i believe you need team in order to advance so there's a few key items that you do need and um this, the first part of this is going through nay getting a couple of the key cards that they shot a moon do the moon do 
and it looks like there was a miss there. Um, that happens, but you can... Um, it just means that she counted in the wrong spot, and it's recoverable. It's fine. And she's got this. It, it, it's a certain number down, and it does take quite a bit of concentration. There she goes. She got the yellow card there. So, at this point, what she's going to do is... Uh, just gonna toss some stuff, make some room, and um, grab some more items. And I will be very quiet. This is this is golf talk at this point. Going for birdie. Actually, I don't remember what key item she's going for. It's been a while. Be very, very quiet. Uh, she's taking the visit phone. See this? I'm wondering if this. Ah, uh, okay. So this shows how it be very, very quiet. Hunting rabbits. All right, so I'm guessing she's taking Visiphone. Uh, might be a new strategy. I'm not 100% positive because I do know you can um, uh, skip encounters by using the Visiphone, which is used in the glitchless category quite a bit. So at this point, um, we're going to sell a hidden item, which is going to give us a ton of money. Then we're going to go ahead and um, buy a bunch of items. And what this will do is this will start overflowing. Um, actually, we're going to buy some telepipes and some escape pipes. Um, just enough for what we need in order to um, travel fast. We don't need them a lot. I believe it's two and four, I think. And let's see. All right, so these must be the new strats that I'm unfamiliar with right now. But <laughs> basically, the idea is going to be after we're done pulling items out and getting all the key items we need, we're going to... Um, do another glitch. Um, okay, so what Lisa's doing, you're going to see her bring up the um, inventory. Basically, if you bring up the inventory, it resets your step counter to zero. And you're usually given, I believe, it's ten steps before an encounter. I mean, you literally could just mash the, the select and cancel button as much as you want in order to... Um, skip encounters um this but that could you know really mess up your thumbs i'm still recovering from that one and that was like three years ago when i last tried to do it that way so lisa's def lisa's thumbs are probably a heck of a lot better than mine right now i would give you guys thumbs up but one you can't see it and two they would probably crack if i did so all right so we're going to the north bridge now we went to that town we exited it well i'll explain why in a minute so Right now, um, um, press F for respects. This guy who um, is guarding the bridge uh, just killed his daughter. Very sad. And then they blew up. So, but that's okay because we have two of them in our inventory. Um, oh, Lisa. Oh, you went back. Oh, well, no, this is actually the team glitch. What happens because we have a second team in our inventory is the cutscene activates again. And because we exit the room afterwards, Everything gets shifted upwards. You'll see she'll be able to walk right above the bridge and through. Um, the reason we do this is there's no encounters while this is going on. So we visit this town. We visited the first town of Arima. Uh, this was Opuda. Um, oh, Rudo's the... name. Sorry to interrupt. Go right ahead. Uh, yes, we need Rudo's name right now. Rudo and Amy's names. Alrighty, so Rudo is going to be Alter, which is going to be U-L-T-R, and then Amy will be Netta, which will be N-E-T-A. Aww, that's awesome. Kind of noticing a theme here. I do notice a theme here. <laughs> Alright, so this is um, Rudo and Amy or Alta and Netta here. Um, normally, in a regular playthrough, um, Rudo is your um, beefy, gun-wielding maniac. Actually, he's a former soldier, but we're going to call him a gun-wielding maniac anyway because the guy uh, hits like a truck. Uh, in this game, he's basically going to be a meat shield, <laughs> and he's we're going to be basically doing him the, the same thing to him that we did to Rolf, and that is we're first stripping him, and we're going to break his inventory too. And by doing this, we're going to be able to um, get the remaining Nay items. But first things first, um, we need to go into the room and activate the inventory glitch on um, Rudo here, or Alta. Ultra. Ultra. Alter. There we go. I'm guessing it's short for Ultros, but I'll just let that be your secret and mine. 
I, I don't think anyone here is going to, um, you know, tattle on me for spoiling that secret. All right, so the two items that um, Lisa pulled out were the key tube and the red card. Um, we need the key tube in order to get through the western bridge, and we need the red card in order to access the red dam. So, at this point, we have a good chunk of our key items, but we need to do a little shopping before we can get the rest of it. So, we're going to go over here to the teleporter and go back to Oputa. And we're going to do a little more shopping. Because, you know, what's an RPG without a shopping trip? And... At least this one, uh, we, <laughs> this will allow us to uh, break the game anymore. So she, um, Lisa's going to get a fiber gear for Amy. And she's also going to buy two ceramic bars for Nay and um, two ceramic knives for... Um, nope. She's gonna, yep, she's going to buy two... We got, we, we, got, we got this, Lisa. You got this. So two ceramic bars for Nay. And they are ceramic, they are not chocolate, unfortunately, because I don't think that would do much damage. But this being a broken game like this, I think a chocolate bar would probably do a lot more damage than a ceramic bar. So two <laughs> ceramic knives and two ceramic bars. Um, this is going to be our only means of attack. And it's going to do enough, that's for sure. So she's going to go ahead and equip Nay with the two ceramic bars. And she's going to start... Um, she's going to start uh, rearranging... Um, inventory. Oh yes, this is why we named Rolf ABWX. T pay attention to Rolf's name as we do this. He's actually pulling out nay items out of his name because we're um, because of the inventory glitch. We're pulling those values out of his name, so his name is all broken right now. But oh, uh, you did forget one there, um, Lisa, because his W is still there. I could be wrong at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait We're a second, he's doing this together. We are, we are. It's like, wait a second, I know I haven't played this in a while. Is this new strategy I'm not aware of? There we go. Thanks for calling me out. I appreciate <laughs> no it. No problem. I, I didn't want you to get all the way there because if you had, um, what happens is if you don't pull in the, um, if you don't pull everything out when you start doing the antidote glitch, as, as uh, we used to call it, it's now a different item that we put in there. But once you do the antidote glitch, it overwrites those values so you wouldn't be able to pull out the nay armor anymore. So we have to make sure we get all of those. Now she's going to rearrange, um, unequip and re-equip items here and there. It may look like it's um, like, why are, you why are you equipping this weak piece of armor when you have the great piece there? Um, it's all to line up Amy's defense value so that we can pull out the remaining Nay items. And at this point, um, both Nay and um, Netta or Amy, I'll just, I'll, I'm going to use it interchangeably because I, I can't think like that. <laughs> Their defense levels are extremely high. We're talking uh, tw uh, tens of thousands, and, which is far greater than you can even get normally in this game. So, the only thing that can really damage either of them right now are um, basically AoE attacks with fixed damage. Um, Dark, Dark Force has one, Mother Brain has one, but we're going to make it so that both Amy and Nay have a ridiculous amount of HP as well, so after a certain point, this game is safe. It's the most, um, the most frustrating part of this run, which is not really frustrating, it's more. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> restart. Oh, uh, did you, uh, what, what happened? Um, I I messaged something wrong with Rudo because I'm just pulling nothing. Ooh. Okay. Was uh, was that my fault? I'm I'll blame. Well, well actually, no, no, let's no. have. Let's, <laughs> no wait. Before I blame me, we have to at least associate where the real blame lays, and that is with hashtag blame Wells. That <laughs> is where we're going with it. Yes. Alf, what do you? Alf, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> yes, everybody, be there or be square, according to Alf. My my co-commentator who is, um, you know, just sitting around right now. And be there and hashtag blame Wells. We, hey, we have yes. one person here to do this. So basically what happens, unfortunately, if you do mess up with um, the inventory, um manipulation and trying to pull out the right items in some cases 
it can rip the run. And thankfully, at that point, you're only about 10 minutes in at that point. And you can reset easy enough. But, um... Yeah, it's... After that part, though, it becomes a lot easier. I'm gonna and... take the headset off, um, so I'll be AFK. I'm... Okay, so... <laughs> So Lisa right now is going to be co concentrated because evidently I'm a distraction. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> that. I tell you what, if if she's going to have her headset off and is going to take some time to concentrate, which we all completely understand, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here with a couple of donations. It looks like these might be left over from the previous run. Uh, we have a $5 donation from Margaret Ann, which says, Hooray to all of my friendos and RPG Chick, and I love you all. And this is, run has been amazing. And we also have a $12 donation from Tokuhiro, which says 1123 is a Fibonacci number. A number shows a power level. Power levels are from Dragon Ball, therefore we need more Dragon Ball. So uh, if you are wanting to donate and have your donation comment read on air by me, please go ahead and do so. Our lovely Valkyrie Dravenheart has just dumped a whole mess of a bunch of links here in chat. We can get information about the schedule, what the marathon is all about, how to donate, and some of the incentives to which you can donate. So uh, please click on those, do things, give money. Uh, we all appreciate all of that. And I want to read stuff, especially for this run for Lisa. I think that'd be fun. So uh, so please, uh, let's have some donations roll in and I will read them out when I get the opportunity. And I, just as a bonus to you guys, for every donation we get, I'm going to have Al say something, right, Al? Be there or be square. So yes, get those donations. And if you want to continue to hear this wonderful voice of a 1980s plushie that for some reason still works, we definitely need all the donations. So bring us all your money. Wait, we got two donations in that one, didn't we? Uh, yes, we did. Ha-ha, <laughs> then we get it again. Do you say anything else anymore? He's he's looking at me funny. Ugh. So it looks like okay, everyone, we gotta send our power to Lisa right now. This game, this game definitely does get frustrating with um, counting because a lot of it, and it's not just I mean it's not just counting one two. I mean it's you literally from the bottom of the inv from the bottom of the screen when your cursor goes, you have to count. On most of the manipulation, you have to count down 36, down to which is technically slot or item slot 56, and to do that uh, not only accurately but fast is um, really difficult. And everyone's uh, giving up for Lisa because she's doing an amazing job with this, and we all definitely want her to get through this game. She will. She's got this. Yeah, everyone. And I and I, I hope that uh, I hope that her headset is still off uh, and she cannot hear me because uh, she told us right before this run started this is her very first marathon run of any sort ever so uh, I remember my first run uh, did not go smoothly uh, I know a lot of other people have similar stories so yes please lend my dear friend Lisa your energy here uh, she I know wants to put on a great show. I know she wants to, to do well. And this looks like an extremely difficult and tricky run to get going. So uh, please go ahead and, uh, and, and give that love. Uh, you can even do it in donation form if you'd like me to read it off as a comment. I'm more than happy to do that, hint, hint. So, uh, so yes, let's, let's uh, make sure that, that Lisa feels the love and knows that we support her on her very first run ever. Absolutely. Actually, to be honest, I think this, I think Fantasy Star 2 was the um, first game I um, ran in a marathon as well. So she's, all right, she's trying to do the um, team duplication trick, but she keeps getting blank slots, so. Oh, I'm trying to think. No, Lisa, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to think of how, the, <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to do this. Yes, but you have to, um. Oh, does he have to move up to next? I don't remember. I, I know she's um, she's struggling right now. I can, it's like, Lisa, listen to me. I, <laughs> no, she's got this. It's nerves, I'm going to say, because I got, like I said, when I first did this, I, I believe this happened a couple times as well to me. And anybody who is um, 
once you get past this part, it's a smooth, it's a smooth ride. It used to, when it first came out uh, with a speed run when Jasid and I were working on it, it was definitely a lot different and a lot more dangerous and luck driven. Especially um, Dark Force could rip runs very easily, which sounds like almost every Fantasy Star game. <laughs> Actually, I think I do think every Fantasy Star game could uh, used to be able to at least still can rip up to Dark Force. So we're gonna try this again. I am going to go ahead and jump in here. We did receive a donation uh, while that was going on. We received an eighty-nine dollar donation from Random Hughes with no comment. Thank you very much for that very generous donation, Hughes. He, hey, he said something different. And that was 89. As in 1989, when both Fantasy Star 2 and Alpha the Master System came out. So, it's like the same game. Absolutely. Alright, she's got the Moon Dew. Good. Good start. So, the Moon Dew, um, funny thing about that, we do... Er, yes, it's the first item we get. And thankfully, coincidentally, it's very handy because... Um, there's a good chance in this game that both Rolf and Rudo will die. Um, and you, you can't get into the final dungeon if Rolf is dead. So, um, having that Moon Dew is a good safety net. Alright, so she's got one. And she's gonna try the duplication trick. Come on. There we go. Good. I don't... That was very weird. She was doing the same thing, um, this time as she did last time, but um, it wasn't duplicating. That's very odd. I am going to have to take that back to the laboratory and then um, study that a, a little bit. Yes, study. That's absolutely what I do in my laboratory. Wait a second, why am I talking about my laboratory on live Twitch stream? I don't know, why don't you stop, because i got some donations to read, okay? Yes, please do, go right ahead. Okay, cool, I'm just saving you there. Um, you. We just got a really nice donation here uh, from Amelison of $69, which says, Swamp World, Swamp World, also all the love and strength to Lisa. So, to do a little cleanup here, that donation was uh, what got met for the Dragon Warrior, I believe it's the Dragon Warrior randomizer run, to do the big swamp flag on that run. Also, the previous donation from Random Hughes of $89 was exactly what was needed to meet the donation to get the debug mode incentive met for the Willow run that is going on tomorrow night. So, uh, thank you very much for donating to those. If you would like to donate and have some incentives met, maybe do some bid wars or whatnot, be sure to check those out because we do want your money going to places where it gets to paying for the things that you want to see. While I was doing all that yakking, we got another donation in here, $10 from Nemo2342, which said, I found this in my invisible inventory and thought I should donate it during this fun PS2 run. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. So we'll go ahead and hold on to that for Lisa once she can hear us again. Thank you very much for that, Emilison and Nemo. You're saying the same things again, Al. Do you have anything else to say? Yes, that be there. Where are we being again? I don't know anymore. <laughs> Elf, thank you. You're, you're definitely incentivizing people, I would say. <laughs> um, all right, so she's got the first part of this done, so she's uh, definitely getting this... Uh, once you get into a rhythm in this game, then it starts clicking and everything goes fine at that point. Um, she basically sells a, a hidden um, item in Rolf's inventory at that point. It's the, basically the Laconia helmet. And she's buying the telepipes again, so we're we're good here. So one telepipe, two telepipe. Um, did she get that into Rolf's inventory? Well, thankfully, um, as far as escape pipes and telepipes go, it won't rip a run if you miss them. It'll just make the walkbacks a lot worse. So one telepipe, two telepipe. There we go. She's got enough, and she's gonna walk out of town. We're gonna do some power strolling at this time. So, so yes, again, you're going to see her. Uh, well, thankfully, the bridges are safe. Alf must really like Squaresoft games. Alf, do you like Squaresoft games? He's giving me a blank look. He's really giving me a blank look right now. Are there any cats? 
there are actually two cats sitting at the foot of my bed. And maybe maybe he's just looking at me as like, you know, I could use a sandwich right around now. I mean, you know, a, a cat sandwich, oh, that's hard to pass. Stop the, wait, what am I talking about? No, 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 we, we don't we don't talk about that here. All right, so you see she got into an encounter here. Um, it's that, anything with the fire ants usually are pretty safe. Um, it's nothing really to worry about at this point. Um, again, she's usually giving some free steps. She'll pop up her inventory, or excuse me, her menu, drop it back, and she'll get some free steps that way. Um, remember what I said about free 11 steps? Yeah, evidently by 11 I mean 1. Um, mosquitoes are a bit dangerous here because they do fixed damage, and um, that's usually 1 or 2. And the, the escape rate, each enemy has an escape rate, and we're going to hope they attack uh, Rolf here. And, oh, come on, game. Come on. Um, yeah, everything else uh, isn't going to bother Nay. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, game. All right, so she's going to switch up to... Um, and she should be fine as long as they... Um, there we go. So she, at this point, she's mad. And I don't blame her. And Rolf's just gonna pelt her away. Okay, so Nay's dead. That's not a problem, though. Um, Nay can be revived. So it's just a little um, out of our way. Thankfully, we don't need a lot of money. She could go back to town now if she wanted to do it, or she could advance uh, to North Bridge. And she's gonna probably mash that um, that um, um, I, uh, that menu button. We'll get there once she gets. North Bridge, so, again, this is where we're going to use this glitch. It, it's not a problem, nay dying. That was just really bad luck. Um, press F for respects again. Again, we have a duplicate team, so you know, nothing... We're fine. We cloned her already. Um, so she's going to go back into the North Bridge. And and basically, she's not walking out herself. So this actually part is um, happens automatically because of um, the game saying... Uh, nope, this is the way your character's got to move. So, but because the game still thinks that we're in a cutscene, well, there's, there's no encounters. So, basically, anytime you walk in with team on the right side of the bridge, um, oh, ooh, oh, Lisa, this isn't going to work because they can't use um, the inventory. You're going to have to use the teleporter. Okay, she's good, she's good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, this, I'm supposed to be informed in, in commentary, but I, it's like I'm watching a football game in a way. It's like, no, you can't pass. It's like, you can't pass to the off or to the defense stand. It's like, no, don't do not do that. It's like, oh, I, I feel really, <laughs> I feel really bad at times. Because I'm like, ah, I am Gandalf. No, I, I am definitely not a Gandalf. <laughs> the only thing so I'm not passing. Go ahead. I'm I'm sorry, sorry, but you had you had mentioned earlier that that uh, money isn't a big deal here because she doesn't really she doesn't really need it. Um, but you know who does? Who? Please inform me. Why I I will, and it would be some of our very lovely Valkyries who are putting on this marathon so that they can get out to RPG Limit Break in May. I just put the donation link in chat just a minute ago. Um, again, as as we were talking about. Uh, pretty much so far throughout this run um, Lisa needs your energy and she needs it in the form of uplifting donation comments so please even if it's just a couple bucks get some donations in here you're putting it towards a great cause for some great friends of mine and we're really going to be it, it could really be uplifting to, to root Lisa on so I, I encourage you uh, to please do so and again you've got plenty of incentives still because uh, we're, we're just in the first day of the marathon, so if there's anything particular you want to see, a name you want to see or whatnot, make sure to put your money where you would like for that to go. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, the, the Valkyries are some of the greatest people you will ever get, get to know, and they've helped me a lot through um, a lot of recent events and through the past as well. And anything you guys can do to help them along, please, by all means, do. They, I, I can't stress enough how great they are. Every single one of them. I'm gonna cry now. Alf, this is your fault. I'm blaming him. I'm literally gonna cry right now. That's how sensitive I am these days. <laughs> hey, you, you go ahead. It's fine. 
I'm gonna cry. I haven't cried on stream since that one time. Well, I'm not gonna go into details. Um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I still blame now, but I'm good. Alright, so it may seem like nothing's going on right now. Um, again, Lisa's pulling us, or basically wants to put a certain item in there. And there we go, key two and red card. Those are the two items we want to see. We want to give them both to Nay. And... There we go. So, at this point... Oh, well, it doesn't matter who gets them, as long as Rolf or um, um, Bruno does not get them. Because what happens is, if we give either of them items, it... Um, uh, yeah, basically, if we give them key items, we have to find another way to get them. And that just takes too long. You might as well restart at that point. So, here we go. Take two uh, to the Apuda shopping. We're going to get the fiber gear for um, Amy. And we're going to buy all the weapons we need for the game. And we're going to get the last bits of items. We're going to do the... Um, we're gonna do the antidote glitch, which is a different item, and I don't remember what the item is anymore. This because uh, it used to be the old strategy was we would buy antidotes and fill in um, values in each slot until we basically raised everybody's strength up as well. Um, just need to find a different item that works better, um, because what it was is um, <laughs> damage calculation. In this game is really funny. So even though it may look like your attack is astronomical, um, basically if your damage goes over 255, it rolls over to zero. So even if your attack is at, you know, 10,000, 25,000, however high it wants to go, it's gonna, when it goes through its damage formula and everything else, it's basically gonna roll over many times after 255, and then say, oh, this does three damage. Well, I always as good as all this strength if, um, you know, I can't use it. Um, I did a lot of research on this because I want an easier path to this game. So the old strategy was you'd get one steel bar for an A and um, Passio, and then you would get a um, ceramic bar here in Oputa for her. Um, or you could get two steel bars and two ceramic bars because the steel bars would deal more damage to... I think it was Dark Force, and the ceramic bars would deal more damage to Mother Brain. Um, or you could do one or the other. But, Jaseed found a new item to use in the glitch, um, in the, or excuse me, in the antidote glitch, that makes it so that the ceramic bar does um, damage, e basically equal damage to both Mother Brain and um, Dark Force. Um, the, uh, the old glitch worked fine with ceramic knives. The ceramic knives were found to be the strongest weapon to use against both enemies for Amy. But for Nae, it was a little bit different because of um, reasons and <laughs> whatnot. So, yeah, she's doing her last bit, and they, or, um, Lisa here is going to take it slow. Um, just so that uh, she doesn't uh, misnumber... And this is, again, where it takes um, really excellent concentration. And because even miscounting once, um, you'll, you'll pull blank values. And though it's not necessarily bad, but if you continue to pull blank values, then it messes things up. Um, and the reason she's taking steps uh, before she pulls up her inventory is, um, I mean, you could just stand still and do it, but you can pull up your um, menu as you take a step. So just take a step, and in the middle of it, pull it up, and you can at least save yourself a few frames, because we're all about the frames here, right? Right, this is where you all agree with me. Yeah, agreed. Thank you, thank you. I'm glad somebody's paying attention to me. I mean, I'm not. I'm not paying attention to me. <laughs> you know what I'm actually paying attention to? Um, pay attention to the fact that we got a couple donations. Yeah, ah, Ooh, you're donations. catching on, Starbird. I, I like you. I like you. Uh, yeah, uh, I am actually, <laughs> two donations. Uh, both of them from He Who Is Pale. Both of them for two dollars, and one of them says this was inevitable. And I think what uh, He Who Is Pale was referring to there is that he has donated uh, the money towards naming Maxim in Lufia Two Ancient Cave Honk. So. If you would like to, uh, and I believe that is going to be the first 
name for that character. So if you would like to name it something other than Honk, if you would like to reinforce naming that character Honk, then I believe you know what to do by now. Be there or be square. Yes, that is what you have to do. Be there or be square. Everyone, we survived. We, we did survive. Chopping. Yay! GG. Awesome. Your patience. Awesome, Lisa. We were all given. We were all sending you our energy, and by energy, we money towards the Valkyries. Right? Yes, exactly. So yes, what she's indeed. doing, what she's doing now is she's giving antidotes and escape pipes to um, Rolf, and in doing so, this is filling. His, it's basically overwriting um, data at this point, overwriting RAM values, and it's going to buff up Nay. Um, it's so that her attack is astronomical, her defense is astronomical, her HP, everything, her agility, um, it's overriding everything. And we go, we step out, and we rearrange the party so that Rudo's in the lead, because when we do it for Rudo, Amy's stats get increased dramatically. And we're doing the same thing here, we buy so much of the antidote, um, and then we switch to escape pipes. And this will... I believe, actually, for Nay, we do. You know, I don't even know the new strats anymore. That's how out of touch I am with reality. I mean, this game, yes. <laughs> and this is the last bit of, that she has to count. And going over the um, going over is not necessarily a bad thing. She'll probably check her strength just to make sure everything is lined up. And um, yeah, you can see like glitch graphics and everything for their stats, which is fine. And at this at this point this game becomes power stroll and at least this is um, that was that was definitely that, that mosquito fight scared me oh god that scared me I, know. I i had to check a few things and make sure i was still alive you know my pulse my blood pressure i was like oh poor nay it's like it's, it's, i was just across my fingers like come on let him i mean the thing is those mosquitoes i believe if i recall correctly have like a 60 percent run chance and they were not having any of it and it's like those are like the only enemies you could have fought that could have dealt damage to nay besides the frogs but you know we don't like frogs anyway I just like really unlucky because like I mean I ground I was grinding pretty hard yesterday like no issues counting no mosquitoes like a PB and then like today nah not today yeah. friend but you know uh, what that, we got through it that that's a fantasy star game in a nutshell it's just gonna say nope to ya and I mean there are some cases where if you if you don't get the right um, if you don't get the right item there's a there's a backup way to get it in marathon safety but it's um it's more you're, you did the better thing there by resetting because it would have taken a longer time to do it otherwise i don't think you wanted to go to the control tower in order to get um the key cards <laughs> oh goodness so what she's doing now actually lisa this is a good time to explain what's going on now yeah, since, the, um... since the counting doesn't need to be done anymore no more counting, so I'm on my way to uh, get a jet. The yes, the jet <laughs> scooter. You're cutting in there, is it? Or, uh, I can't even speak today. Maybe I'm cutting out. <laughs> it's me. I tell you it's what. Why don't me. I just go ahead and cut in? Because I have a donation to read. Oh, good segue. <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about the yeah. things you write out of the hall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've done this before. <laughs> we have a $20 donation from Bahabut X, who says, Sending good vibes, you can do it, Lisa Rocks. I'm a people alien. <laughs> Thank you for that donation, Baha. <laughs> Alright, so basically, this is the only dungeon um, that we're going to have to go through that's of any real danger. Um, it's the play, it's uh, called Roron, it's basically a giant dump. And as you can see, we went through one level right now, and um, you can see how one fight, you get some experience, just take a look at how much, uh, how many levels everybody's gaining. And by everybody, I mean Nay and Netta at this point. Oh, 
Hey, so, tech side, like, thank you very this much for that like, subscription. The speedrun's like a dream come true for when I was a little kid, because when I was a little kid I hated random encounters, and later on, there'll be no random encounters. Oh yes, <laughs> the um, the random encounters go bye-bye in um, every other dungeon in this game. And this is one of the things that um, is typical 80s RPG at the time, we'll just put it that way. This is a really fun game. Um, casually, unfortunately, I don't think it's aged too well, but it's, if you grew up with it, it's definitely still a lot of fun. Uh, take a look, I, I mean, Moa, Netta is destroying those things. Nay, come on, you can hit harder than that. Up, oh, rest in peace, Rolf. This is fine. We don't need the main character of the game, right? We're just gonna, we're just gonna have the doctor. The doctor's gonna do the most damage. It's like, huh, white mage power, right? <laughs> So basically, in a regular game, Amy is uh, what would be considered a white mage. Um, even casually, depending on um, how you're going about things, I casually I always took Amy because I liked having Gisar and Nasar, <laughs> and it made things a lot easier with her. Um, but we all—I think every Fancy Star two player had only had one rule, and that was don't take you. <laughs> I think even that holds true to even the casual players today, I hope. If not, I'm sorry for them. That leecher is terrifying. My goodness, oh. I'm glad that's over. Yeah, it's like, we're, we need Kevin Bacon here to help us fight these things. Oh no, it's another one! Oh, yes. <laughs> They're scary. I, 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 I am scared. That, this is why I don't like worms. Or snakes. These, these snakes are ugly. But, so... And yeah, this is uh, Fancy Star 2 in a nutshell. You just sometimes just can't run, even if you're given a really good chances to run. Um, the Pulsar and Amoeba combo, I think this particular one is a 50% combo. Or excuse me, a 50% chance. And unfortunately, you can see this is the, vic the victimization of overlapping. And uh, <laughs> you can see how little damage um, happens, but thankfully, um, paralysis only lasts a, a, um, two to three rounds, depending on RNG. So, yeah, it's like zero to the, so, pulsers are kind of a rough enemy with this sub particular run, uh, because, and then, and then Amy just, you know, does max damage against an amoeba, so, <laughs> that's, that's the randomness of this game sometimes. In, in some cases, if, if she had rolled out one or one higher on that, she would have done minimal damage. It's funny that way. I, I laugh and, and cry at the same time. Just one of those things. But, ooh. Okay, I thought I was going to paralyze. It's like, oh, that's a paralyze anime. I'm, I'm commentating this. I'm watching it, and I'm like... I'm cheering her on. It's like I was—I was, I was saying earlier, Lisa. It's like I'm watching people play and I'm commentating. I'm kind of being like, you know, how you get when you watch a football game. It's like, no, don't do that, <laughs> or uh, you're don't pass to them. It's like, no, you can get it, get them, get them. It's that type of thing. And that's kind of what I'm doing hey, right now. Counters that I'm not. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You're getting, uh, you are getting quite a lot of um, random encounters, even. Even more than normal. This is just the type of uh, day it wants to give you. It wants you to let you know. I'm still Fancy Star 2. I don't like people very much. <laughs> I go fast? So, no, no, not today, friend. That's what the yeah. game. We haven't gotten to the power stroll section yet, but we're almost there. So this is the end of the dungeon. We're going to talk to uh, our, our basically our Grizz wannabes, or <laughs> maybe more like Grizz ancestors. Uh, because Fantasy Star 4, we, everyone knows and loves Grizz, um, especially in the speedrun community. We all love Grizz. We're all part of Team Grizz, right? Well, this is his ancestor, and he has a, a mechanical scooter. So, and you talk to him, it um, sets the flag, says, hey, there's a jet scooter here. And basically, we were just going to give you a ride, but no one showed up. It's like, oh, we're just going to take it. So, um, basically, our only encounters to worry about now are while we're in the old world. Um, so a little explanation on why this happened. So she's going to go to the Red Dam right now. You, you know, soon. If these encounters will cooperate, right? I never can, like, not get a random encounter. Uh, yeah. But at least, um, at least your HP is enough so that even these, um, if, even if the mosquitoes do hit you, 
they're not gonna, you know, bother you that much. Unless they hit Rudo, which, you know, we don't, that doesn't matter anymore anyway. <laughs> It's like, uh, at that point, if you if you try and run a couple times, at least that's um, what I always would do. If you try and run a couple times and you don't get it, it's like, oh, I'm just going to fight at this point. Now we are in the Power Stroll section of the game. So, um, what happens is you are not supposed to access uh, these levels until after you fight um, May first, which is technically the first boss of the game. And because you didn't fight her... Uh, because you can actually enter these levels at any time, but you can't get into them with it without the key cards. Um, so as a safety net for these levels, the designer said, well, if they can go in and walk around, they can, you know, listen to the new music, they can... Um, but they basically, as a safety, because the enemies here are, one, robotic, and two, they're going to wreck you if you're at a low level, they basically just put a safety on there to say, no, these, these um, enemies aren't going to show up until... Um, we defeated that first boss. Well, we never defeated that first boss, and in doing so, we could just walk freely around here. It's like, eh, you know, this, this is no problem. This is a good time for a walk. What do you think? I, I'm almost willing to put a pedometer on, see how many steps we take. You know what else this would be a good time for? More money. You know, it would be, but I don't have any donations to read right now. So okay, I just what? wanted to. I know. I, I, I wish I did, but um, that's not really something that I can manufacture myself. It is up to the wonderful, generous viewers out there to donate towards a great cause, which, if you're not aware, is the collective here that is putting on this marathon, the RPG Valkyries. For the RPG Limp Break the event that's going on in May in Salt Lake City, Utah. For some of them, the travel costs is somewhat prohibitive. And so this is an annual event that they've been putting on where the generous donations from folks like you are going to help to support that the travel costs so that they can attend the event. Some of which are actually going to be, uh, you know, potentially running games in, in this event. So if you could please help them do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, like I said, there's plenty of incentives to which you can you can donate. And if you want to do naming or if you want to see certain things happening in a game, doing, uh, you know, upgrading runs or whatnot, there's, uh, there's an incentive command that you can put into chat and you can check out and donate to whatever you'd like. One other thing I wanted to point out, you see that a few uh, uh, items ago in chat, is a link for Lisa Rox's Twitch channel. Please give all of these uh, runners here a follow to come in here and do this marathon and to take the time to do it and, and contribute to something like this is, uh, you know, I mean, they're donating their time to do this. And if you would follow them so that you can support them when they do their own thing, on Twitch, uh, I know that's something that all of them would appreciate as well. So please do keep that in mind. And yeah, let's get some donations rolling in so that we can uh, read off some more fun stuff here. I hope Alf didn't scare him. I mean, I'm scared, but I also have to live with this thing. So <laughs> we got through the Red Dam. And again, now we're back to uh, just getting over world encounters. So at this point, she's going to hit the Green Dam, which is... Um, pretty close to Passio. It's, and normally in the casual playthrough, and especially if um, you bought the game on the Genesis all those years ago, and had this the hint book that came with it with all the maps and everything. Lisa, did you get this game when it first came out? I did not. I got it from the second hand store, so it was just a cartridge. Oh, you didn't have that wonderful hint book. Uh, the hint book suggested the green dam last, and um, the reason being, it's Without maps, this particular level is actually quite convoluted, and and it's only literally two floors, so it's just uh, it's very easy to get lost in. But we hit this one second just because of proximity to um, one of our um, um, restore points. And if I say I, when I say restore points, I mean basically just pass you at this point. So, but because we don't need to get anything special in here, uh, Lisa's just going to get through this level of Lickety Split. I'm aging myself. I'm already talking about something. It's like Lickety Split. That's like something out of the 50s, I think. God, I feel old. <laughs> so, other than that, if there's any donations, 
There should be donations. I'll send subliminal messaging. Don't make me do that. <laughs> I have nothing right now, unfortunately. Uh, all right, then they just get to hear my wonderful voice longer. Unless Lisa, I mean, Lisa can... I guess, you know, what's, you know, if you're interested in speedrunning and you don't have a lot of... Well, they're two young children right now, so I can't do a four-hour speed run. And what's nice about Fantasy Star 2, um, world record's 36 minutes. Um, the most difficult part is, you know, the counting, as you saw or earlier, clearly. Um, and then the rest of it's kind of like just memorizing the maps, and it's it's pretty after that. So yeah, I recommend anyone trying to speed run this game. Like this, uh, this game in particular, I would say, is a very beginner-friendly speed run. The inventory glitch, every glitch in this game is super easy to do. There's no step counter involved in this, like, say, um, Final Fantasy 4, or... Actually, a, a lot of the Final Fantasies, I think, have a step counter. Um, unfortunately, with all the Fantasy Star games, step counters are kind of impossible, because RNG is calculated per frame. So, <laughs> every frame that... And Fantasy Star 4 is infamous for this, but... Um, Fantasy Star 2 also has that, and the only real surefire way of resetting the, the counter is um, through either the Visiphone and saving, or through the what Lisa was doing earlier, and now uh, mashing the menu button and canceling out. And that's a good way to prevent encounters as well, but it definitely gets tiring on your thumb doing that. Which is why I tried to actually play this with the GBA version, because cancel and menu are the same button. Alrighty, a um, couple things here. First of all, I while you had your while you had your your headset off, Lisa, somebody donated in for Runner's Choice. So you have ten dollars to apply where you would like, and you can of course do that after the run. Uh, we just got an anonymous cheer who donated two thousand bits. Thank you very much for that. That is fantastic. Also, we got a few donations to read off here. Y'all came on mass and and gave me a few things to work on here. We have a $5 donation from Rujasu55, who said, this is a donation. We have $5 from Firebird Lover, who says, this was even more inevitable, and this donation is going towards naming Maxim in Lufia 2 Ancient Cave Link. And we also have another donation from Bahamut X, and it is another $20 donation that said, I felt bad Vani didn't have anything to read. So here's another donation. This is another $20 towards Ring Fit Adventure. Unlock the run, unlock the suffering. Ooh, Ring Fit Adventures. Alf, what do you think of that game? I'm a people alien. That literally makes no sense, Alf. Oh, I swear. I swear this guy's only got like eight phrases or something. Ring Fit Adventure. We want to see the... Uh, what, is, what, what was the um, category that game was going to be run in? Was it um, Suffering Percent or... <laughs> Make Us Suffer Percent. There we go. Natara, I think... You're one of the ones... Aren't you, Natara? I'd be completely wrong. You know, I don't remember a whole lot anymore these days. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's Natara. It, it is, Natara is one of them. Um, just so we can do the... Uh, do all the bookkeeping on that. Uh, that brings that to now $50 for that incentive. It needs 300 total in order to meet. So uh, another $250 there. If memory serves, that's going to be, if that run is, uh, it, it's at the very end of the marathon. I think it's on the final day, if uh, if I'm not mistaken. So there's still plenty of time there. But, I mean, you can donate to the most recent, the, you know, the next incentive that's coming up. If you want to donate to something at the end of the marathon, you do you. You can donate towards anything that you would like, provided it's appropriate, especially if it's going to be like naming and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, it, it is it is your money. Put it wherever you would like. I mean, who doesn't want to make make them suffer? I mean, I mean, of course, we want to be very kind, but we also want to see Ring Fit Adventure. It's a 30-minute run from what I was seeing as far as an estimate goes. And to be honest, even if I... I'd probably still have a heart attack doing a 30-minute run like that just because it's a Ring Fit Adventure. And it's exercise, and I hate to tell you this, I exercise and I have been on a hate-hate relationship for years. And I had nothing to say after that. <laughs> okay, well then I'll just go ahead and start talking. Yeah. Um, so 
so to uh, to confirm something that I was just saying before, yes, Ring Fit Adventure is the third to last uh, run of this marathon, which will be taking place uh, next Saturday um, around probably around 3.30 Eastern as it stands right now. So um, again, there's still plenty of time for that if you want to get money in for that donation incentive to uh, to increase the suffering. And oh, and also, uh, we did mention Natara is one of the ones that will be doing it. Uh, her fellow Valkyrie, which is Hex, will be doing it as well along with her. Sounds like a blast. Actually, I am sure it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to see that. All right, so we got uh, two da or three dams down now. And that means we got one more to go. We're using up our last escape pipe at this point. And now we got to go all the way across the world to the blue dam. And I think, well, how was the phrase I want to use? The blue dam is the walkiest of walks in this game, if I, if I think I'm using my terms correctly. English is not my uh, second language, so I'm not sure how that would be phrased. <laughs> Wouldn't you agree, Lisa? It's like the walkiest, the walkiest of walks. I didn't get enough walking before. Yeah. Yeah. There's the, more coming. Yeah, the, the Blue Dam is uh, is basically the biggest dungeon we're going to walk through. And it's five floors of up and down and up and up and down and down. A couple left, rights, left, rights. And I think there might be a BA to start in there somewhere. Wait, that's the wrong game. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm giving you wrong information already. There is no code in this game to give you 30 lives. Just, there are codes to break the game. <laughs> you know, so, while there might not be a code to give you 30 lives, there is ooh, a link segue. where you can make donations to the RPG Valkyries. How about that? Ooh, you're clever. I like you. You're awesome. Aw, thanks. Wait, you're pretty cool, too. I, I try. I try. So, I always wondered, Lisa, ever wonder why they call this the Blue Dam? Little pipes on it? Oh, the purple pipes. I never thought of that. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, I, you see, I never understood. I mean, the red dam, the green dam, the yellow dam, the blue dam. I never understood why they needed that. I mean... You know some of the other other dungeon names in this game, like Roron. You can tell just by listening to it, it's a dump. It's literally a dump. Um, some of the other names in these dungeons, um, Minobi. Um, it's definitely a, t a um, you know, it's got to be a great temple, right? It makes sense, totally. But Blue Dam, no, I, I don't get it. So, again, we're at the part of the power stroll. <laughs> that, um, it, this is a, a, a dam that's very easy to get lost in. It's probably... Uh, I've probably lost more time in the dungeon than anywhere else. It, casually and in speedrun settings. It's just... Ugh. But as far as... Again, this is a, actually a really good a beginner RPG to speedrun. I, um, I I'll reiterate that. Um, glitches are not hard at all to do. There's plenty of documentation. Actually, did yeah. There's still doc. There's new documentation. I think with Jaseed's, um, with Jaseed's new findings, using the Antho and Escape Pipe to um, to buff up both Nay and Amy. So, plenty of documentation on our on Speedrun.com site. Um, and the Fancy Star community as a whole are they're wonderful people. And anybody who runs this will be more than happy to um, give advice. Um, asking me for advice would probably not be a good idea because I might not give the best advice because I am antiquated in this game, evidently. <laughs> so I would suggest somebody wonderful like Lisa, um, Bic. Um, who else runs this game right now? Jaseed runs it. There's many others that run this one. And like I said, it's most after that. It's a really easy RPG to learn, and it's a good way to get into RPG running in general, in my opinion. Even if you've never experienced uh, Sega games, uh, Sega RPGs in the past, this is a um, simple and a good one to learn. Huh. 
Uh, I was, I, you know, I had planned that whole long speech out, and I thought I was long enough to go through the blue dam. I, I've i really got to learn my times better. The I really do. best dam? I don't know. Maybe. What was that? Dam best dam? Ah, uh, blue dam best dam. That's, um... <laughs> that's, um, I guess that's the way it should be called. Blue damn best damn. Well, damn. Is she using a six-button controller? She's playing on the Steam version. Lisa, what kind of controller are you using? I'm using the Apidu M3. There are six buttons on here. Ah, she is using the six-button controller, the 8-bit do. That is actually a wonderful controller to uh, use. Okay. I Confession time? I always thought it was pronounced 8-bit dough. I go both ways. As far as pronouncing that. I'm known for pronouncing things pretty incorrectly. Like, growing up, you know, Final <laughs> Fantasy IV Radio? I said Rida for 20 years. I still say Rida sometimes. It's like, no, don't, don't put that card in. No, don't put the card in. We don't. We all know what's going to happen. If if that's your favorite character in that game, would you say she's your Rida die? Oh, I I am really glad my girlfriend's not hearing this. The the, the dad jokes, the, the dad jokes. <laughs> you know what? It it fits. I I have two little ones of my own, so so I have I'm a card carrying dad joker. So you can't take that away from me. Uh, I don't know what my problem is. I've I've got two adopted fur babies, so that's about as far as it goes with me. <laughs> so. After you, it doesn't matter what dam you go to last. As soon as you put in that um, key card to open the dam, you're going to be attacked by the um, army eyes. Um, story goes is that you are wanted criminals for um, flooding the world, and they basically, by process of elimination, are going to go to the last dam that's not open, and they're going to catch you. Um, after three turns, they automatically um, put you in plasma rings and send you off to this um, satellite in outer space, which is a prison. Um, the thing about that army eye fight, though, is you do have a very small chance to run away from that encounter if you run. And if that happens, you soft lock the game. So it's very... Uh, I, I get scared. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll switch to defense, have everybody defend and just fight it out. And that works, too. At least it guarantees I'm not going to run away. Because I've had that happen in a run once where I did run. I'm like... Oh, come on. One in 256 chance. Yes. It, I thought with yeah. my luck today, it was going to happen today, but it didn't. I was, afra right, I, was I was afraid of that, too. It's like, oh, I hope this doesn't happen. I mean, that would be marathon luck at its finest, as if you got all the way there and, oh, uh, the soft luck of doom. <laughs> so... But anyways, you're sent onto this planet, and it crash. Or excuse me, you're sent onto the satellite, and it crashes into one of the three planets. And as you can see in this nice picture here, it goes boom. Uh, so one of the three planets in the solar system are destroyed. Um, everybody's revived though, so even the two characters you had dead, hey, we're alive again. And at this point in the game, um, things are gonna get a little weird. Um, you actually get the opening cut scene. <laughs> where you talk to the governor you because Lisa's not controlling this right now she was not controlling going to the controls tower and then back to the house this was all automatic because it's thought the game was in the original cutscene so and to keep it with the naming she's got to rename everybody again else they're going to go back to the default name she's got to go back into the house two more times so the game resets itself to a certain point and when I first saw this I was a little scared but it it resets a certain point, but it on it does set the flag for the spaceship to open up, and that's the only reason we go to uh, do the dams is to open up the spaceship. And uh, if we can, and this is like um, this is going to be like the, our barrier skip at this point. Finding a way to get to um, to get to Dizo, which is the second planet or the third planet in the solar system. To get to Dizo without having to go through the dams. That's basically our barrier skip at this point, which I don't see any that ever happening. It'd be great, though. Wouldn't you like to not go to those dams, Lisa? Yes, yes, I would not <laughs> like to go to those dams. Well, Why, you want to know what you want to know what I would like, Starbird? Tell me, what would you like? 
I'd like to read off this donation we just got. I would like for you to do that too. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. It's ten dollars. It comes from Paradox, and it says Rena's choice in honor of ruining a game that nearly ruined my childhood. <laughs> Thank you for that donation, Paradox, and that's another one that you get to assign when this run is over, Lisa. Uh, you're out of this world. You heard, uh, uh, all you donators, you're out of this world. The mercy kill my run, because I... No mercy kill. Oh wait, no! It's here! It's here! I you have one with Nay. Oh my gosh, thank god, I put in the wrong person. Yep, you got it, oh. you got it. So, <laughs> so basically, um... This is a neat trick. If you use the Visiphone while you get to Skewer and you save the game, if you use a Telepite immediately after, you'll go to the nearest town. And thankfully, it's the town we want to be at because it's actually the closest town to the next dungeon. And, I mean, if um, if if you had forgotten to Telepite, you would have been able to walk it, but um, it's a little annoying. It's, it's not a long walk, but um, digging up, a, I could have found you a map if need be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we would have we would have got through this run, Lisa. You're getting through this run. <laughs> no Thankfully, mercy. I just gave it to the wrong person, and we're gonna we're gonna finish this, everyone. We're we finish. we are finishing this run. We are not mercy killing this, Lisa. You got, <laughs> you did everything right on this one. We're not mercy killing. You got this. So much like the dams, uh, because of flag certain flags not set, um, there are no encounters in this dungeon either. The, only the overworld has encounters right now. And the crevice here, which is a nice, I mean, you get, uh, you get the last piece of nice music. This is, this is some of the, this, this game's got some really banging soundtracks. If I, what the heck was that? Oh, God. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of banging. Yeah, um, that would be my pink palette that just fell for some reason. Cats? What do you, no, I can't blame the cats, they're both sleeping. Oh, well, Alf? I can't blame you, you're just giving me a blank stare. Oh, those black beady eyes. I, I can't say mad at you, Alf. Good boy. Good boy. I'll go. I'll give you a cat sandwich later. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thankfully, that's at least one good thing of um, this run is like, hey, there's nothing here except walking. No encounters. It's always lovely. And actually, we are getting very close to the end of the game. And I'm sure Lisa's like, oh, the end of the game. I can breathe. Yes. <laughs> I can breathe. That's like oh, the babies really want their mama. Uh, the, this, and I, I think your headset was off when I was talking about this earlier. I think this was actually my first marathon game too that I ran was Fancy Star Two, and the the route was a lot different back then, a lot scarier too, because thing um, how we did things were a little different. Yeah, I have Alf and cats in the same house. Thankfully, they have a mutual agreement with each other that as long as the cats don't look delicious, Alf isn't going to eat them. So, um, the cats, you know, they frequently use the cat box, and that kind of makes them not delicious. So, you know, Alf is in, a, in kind of a, a mutual agreement with them. But the moment they have ketchup and mustard on them, that agreement may go out the window. Alf, put away that ketchup bottle. God, I have to do everything around here. So having all eight nay items will trigger, um, <laughs> will trigger this cutscene. Trigger more walking. Will trigger more walking. <laughs> it triggers you to that you actually can get the nay sword, which is um, you know Rolf's ultimate weapon, a uh, great sword of smiting evil. It's the master sword. We're just gonna put it that way. It's the master sword. And. Again, final dungeon of the game, and there's not a in here, so this is just how broken the game is at this point. They just said, uh, no, we don't need anything here. When in actuality, a casual playthrough of this game, the monsters are ridiculously strong here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, at this point, it's just a final walk to the final two bosses. Um, but yeah, the only reason you even need those nay items is to um, get the nay sword and, and set that flag. Um, actually, you can pull the nay sword out of your inventory through using the inventory glitch. Uh, the only problem is that's one of the thing. This is one of the things that actually needs a flag set to it rather than having the item in the inventory. So even if you had the nay sword in your inventory, you couldn't just go right to the final dungeon. 
if it were that easy, that's what we would have been doing the whole time. <laughs> so, very, um, this is a very large dungeon, not nearly as big as the dam. That's like our largest split, I think. And there's, it's only two floors, so it's all just up and down. It's not that difficult to get. I mean, it's, it's easy enough to get lost in, but it's, um, if you do get lost in, it's not that difficult to correct yourself. Yes, we are in walking percent right now. But everyone get hyped because we are coming up to the final two bosses here. And it's pretty safe, though. We'll just put it that way. I don't think you have... And unless, for some reason, you get, like, major curses and, like, no restoring. That would scare me. <laughs> I should... <laughs> yeah, let's not push it. We know how your luck's been with this game today and how it's been wanting to treat you. But, so this is Pandora's box, and because Dark Force likes to hide in treasure chests, he's like, why'd you wake me up? I am, you know, I don't even have my makeup on right now. Look at me. It's like, how dare you wake me up? So, oh god. <laughs> yeah, Dark Force is not a morning person. So, the, the, the final two bosses are actually so large you can't even see the, um, how much damage they're being dealt. And... I believe, um, if I recall correctly, um, Amy's doing probably in the realm of 200 and something per shot at this point, and Nay's doing about uh, 140 to 170, I believe, if I recall correctly, with the ceramic bars and the setup. Um, we're hoping uh, th three or four rounds is the best I think that can happen, and um, so... Uh, okay, so Nay's got a minor curse on her. So these are what what's are called curses. There are six curses. Um, three of them are major, which um, three of them are major, which will completely disable the character, which is what Rudo had on him. Um, three of them are minor, which will um, if the character dual wields, they will only have one shot instead of their two. Um, there's other things that can happen, like if they fight less ferociously, I believe they take, uh, they deal less damage. If they, um, have, um, can't use techniques, um, uh, the one Nay just had was a major curse. She's just searching everybody's items. It doesn't really do anything, but it's, it keeps them from attacking. And you'll know Amy is only attacking once right now, so she's got a minor curse on her, and at this point, Dark Force is doing his AoE attack, which does about 50 to 60 damage to everybody, and it's fixed damage. So this will uh, deal damage to him, but thankfully both Nay and Netta have a ton of um, HP, so they should be able to tank through this. Netta should be able to do enough damage, and down goes Dark Force. So... Um, normally that's a very scary fight. Um, you did notice once that there was like a blue flash and the, it said the Nay sword emits the light and the curse that I just felt. So that's what happens. And, and that proc is random. And if both of them had had a major curse, neither of them would be able to do damage until we got an, a Nay sword proc. And that's what the scary part is. Um, it's still unlikely that you're going to, with this setup, that you're going to die to Dark Force, but that can happen. And I've not seen it happen yet. I don't want to ever see it. But other than this, Mother Brain... Would you consider Mother Brain a free fight at this point? Yes, yes, I would consider it a free fight. No, oh, yeah, were you asking me? I'm sorry. I, oh, I was I, asking Lisa. She's, she's, the one, she's the one playing the game. See, if it's free, it's for me. That's that's how I like it. So basically at this point, um, it's press, uh, press C to win. So you just push the button once, let the game go through, and uh, three to four rounds if all attacks land, um, should be fine. Um, now the brain does a supernova attack, it's fixed damage on everybody, about 50 to 60 damage. If she, attack if she does a single target, it's not going to hit. And other than that, um, girl power, we're just going to stab this thing to death, claw him. And... Ladies. Yes. Work. Yep. Well, even in the 100% run, um, it's all um, all girls, so... <laughs> Just because that's how the um, inventory glitch set. So, in 100%, um, where you actually had to fight Nay first, you end up using Amy, Anna, and Sheer. Because it's the easiest for the uh, glitch to work out. But it's also a lot longer of a run, because you have random encounters in places you shouldn't. Come on, she's almost dead. 
Now I'll say she's almost dead. Wow, I thought it was like three to four rounds. Okay, there we go. That that was like four. Absolutely count, right? Right? <laughs> oh yeah, the the background music in this game's one full, especially in this particular level. So at this point, um, it's basically 